Visit our fabulous sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry, link in the description below. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of April 21st, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. There are not a whole lot of celestial connections taking place, so it's not necessarily active, but what is happening is profound. We have the most surprising day of the year. We have a truly intense and emotional celestial climate and then we have towards the end of the week some confusion as well so there's a variety of energies here from clarity to uncertainty but we are going to start with the clarity early this week right around monday give or take a day on either side depending on where you are on the planet the sun will meet uranus in the sky this is sometimes called the most surprising day of the year and this is special for a few reasons now these two planets do meet in the sky about once a year and when they meet it is a time of clarity of breakthroughs of leaps into our future and owning a sense of our own authenticity but it can also be shocking it can be the kind of surprise that takes us off one path quite dramatically and puts us on another. Now, this is going to be taking place in the sign of Taurus. The last time the sun met Uranus in the sign of Taurus was the early 1940s. So it's been a good long time since these planets met together in the sky in this sign. And on the one hand, it is going to give us a collective understanding of which way it is and how it is the coming seven years will unfold so in our own lives as part of our own unique journeys we are going to get powerful insights into what it is that this uranus moving through the sign of taurus for the next seven years well where is it that it's meant to help you to create your own revolution well this will give you some very clear indications and collectively we should notice themes that have to do with Uranus moving through the sign of Taurus and all those things that I talked about in the Uranus special horoscope that you can see on my YouTube channel. There were quite a few things I spoke about in that video uh, off the top of my head. Some of the things that come to mind in that hour video, uh, we talked extensively about currencies, about uh, banking, about how it is that we exchange currencies and address currencies and do uh, money related matters and understand money as well. Uh, I talked about fabrics and textiles and uh, a whole lot of other things. So you might wanna have another look at that, but having said that it is uh, very imperative that we look in particular at our own individual journeys and where is it that we are being asked to wake up if you will because that is ultimately what Uranus is is the great awakener where is it that we are being asked to honor ourselves to trust ourselves to trust our inner authority regardless of what external power may be playing out in our lives and to know where it is that when we embrace our most authentic selves, we actually step into a space of greater inner peace. In fact, there is nothing that allows us to truly be at peace with ourselves as much as honoring what it is that we know we are meant to do and whom it is that we truly are. Now, as we navigate towards the middle of the week, that is when Pluto will officially go retro for the next few months. Now, we are gonna feel this energy throughout the week because essentially Pluto is standing still in the sky. And with this move, it heightens Plutonian energies that much more. And Plutonian energies include uh, power, include an understanding of authority, particularly in the sign of Capricorn. I also think about the different ways in which we strive to understand the hidden dynamics and what that actually means. When a planet goes retro, 
retrograde rather its energies turn inward and become more personal become more reflective and since the planet Pluto has to do with transformation it becomes about being the change we wish to experience in the world and in our lives and so the focus becomes less on what it is that we can do in an external sense to create changed circumstances but rather whom it is that we can be, what it is that needs to change within us so that we can actually experience life differently and live a new reality. The planet Pluto um, has to do with a few different things. Uh, yes, it has to do with transformation and change. It's a planet that has associations with uh, psychoanalysis and psychology for that reason, because it is psychoanalysis that we undertake because we want things to be different. We want our lives to be different. And it is a diligent and consistent process that allows us to have a sense of regeneration. And we may undergo this process not only psychologically, but you think about physically as well. People will undergo a diligent process to experience improvement there. Uh, I think about things like rehabilitation that tends to be a very diligent process where we slowly are able to find ourselves regaining or perhaps for the first time gaining strength in extremities or in different parts of our bodies. Well, that tends to be a very diligent process. And until we get to those breakthrough moments, uh, it tends to be something that doesn't have a lot of glamour around it. It is about the consistency that gets us to that place of increased strength, of changed transformations. So what is that uh, diligent process and where is it that you are ready and are feeling connected to committing to a diligent process that's going to move you towards transformed circumstances, whether it's a, a literal or a metaphorical journey. This is where we start to undertake that journey, where we start to go within and where we start to examine ourselves more deeply than we have before. As part of this, we will come to uncover inner reserves uh, and understand our inner strength more than we did before. It tends to be a time when we understand emotion as a great source of power. And we also understand that focus as well, truly dedicating ourselves heart and soul in a particular direction is how it is that we actually can experience that much more meaningful change. I remember my mom, she used to tell me, wherever it is that you put energy, wherever it is that you put your attention, it shows. It is going to show up in your life. And so if you look at your life, a lot of times you can see what is it that you've been paying attention to more and where is it that maybe you haven't been paying as much attention because wherever it is that you have dedicated time and energy and attention, you may not get those transformed circumstances immediately, but doing it diligently, focusing on a particular area over a period of time must show up in your life. It must lend itself to changed circumstances in the fullness of time. Well, it is Pluto going retro that asks us to consider where it is that our attention is, where it is that our energy is, where it is that our emotional fortitude is found. What is it that we're most intensely uh, passionate about, intensely focused on? It is that very area where we are going to notice that we've manifested certain circumstances in our lives. So this is going to be a delicate process for some. It's going to be uh, quite the awakening for others as they realize, oh my goodness, I've been paying attention in this direction. I've been saying, I don't want that and I do want this, but all my emotional energy has been going in this direction. That moment of awareness is a moment of power. That awareness in and of itself is transformation. I was recently doing a meditation for myself in my own spiritual practice about um, karma and wanting to understand karma. And I truly believe that awareness grants us freedom from karma. And what is karma? It's essentially that you are going to reap what you have sown. And uh, very often there is a fear of that. We think about the things that we've done in the past um, as part of living your life, no matter what it is that you do, how noble your intentions, how pure your heart. It is a part of life that 
there are going to be times when you make decisions that some people are not happy about, that you will make choices that some people are hurt by or that may hurt others. And again, that may not even be the intention, but that can be the outcome. And I think that as part of that, there can sometimes be a fear of reaping things that are not so good. Um, we sometimes and oftentimes will judge ourselves based on the things that we have thought and the things that we've sort of quietly done uh, rather than the larger moves that we have made or the bigger ways in which our love has affected other people's lives and the world in very positive ways. And so I was thinking about how, what is it that frees us from, from karma? Well, you know, the Buddha used to talk about this idea and how it was like very diligently, how it was that we could break the life, death, rebirth cycle. And a lot of that came down or a part of that rather, an important part of that had to do with presence, being in the present moment and awareness. And meditation is a big part of being in the present moment and having that sense of awareness. Now, this is a very crude uh, summary of uh, one of his ways of thinking. And I acknowledge that. I would be the first to acknowledge that. Um, but this is, in essence, one part of his teachings, that it is when we allow ourselves to truly be present, to be in the moment, that we free ourselves uh, from karma, when we remove the sense of desire and the suffering that that causes, that we can free ourselves from the insidious uh, cycle of life, death, and rebirth. And so that's how we often understand karma, is that what you do in this life, you are going to have to answer for it in the next life. But I actually think that we are older souls than ever before. And the evidence for this is the fact that uh, there were times when we would need several, if not a hundred lifetimes uh, to get a certain lesson. And I think now, like you think about how in relationships, for example, now more than ever, it is very unusual to have only one major relationship over the course of a lifetime. Most often what happens is that uh, we will pack in several lifetimes into one lifetime. And where it was that we would need a hundred lifetimes to resolve a certain karma or learn what it was from another soul, now, you know, two years, <laughs> four years, uh, we get the lesson, right? We get what it was that this person was uh, meant to awaken within us or meant to help us to understand about ourselves. Uh, and we grow and we move forward. Now, of course, I know that there is this ideal of uh, meeting somebody and falling in love and that's it. And that's the only person for the rest of your life. And that's a beautiful ideal to have. And there are some people who get to live that, but it is increasingly uncommon to have that be uh, a part of a life path, to have only one major relationship. More often, we will have more than one major relationship. I also think about careers as well. More and more, it is very uncommon uh, to have only one career or to work only within one organization. And you get that job when you're very young and you stay in that job until you retire. You may rise in the ranks, but ultimately you are within a particular organization, in a particular role, or just growing within a particular role. But now it is much more usual for people to have several different, sometimes dramatically different career paths. And again, I think that's because we are packing in several lifetimes into one lifetime. And what used to take us 100 lifetimes to get and then five or 10 lifetimes to get now will take us a lot less time. And I think as part of that, we are interacting with more people than ever before. Uh, we are uh, traveling or meeting diverse types of people more than ever before, in, around the world in particular. More of us are interacting with more of us than ever before. And even those small moments can have some karmic connection play out. It doesn't need to be you know, a big romantic journey that you undertake with this person and you're changed forever, but the smallest moments can be part of the karma that you're meant to live in that moment. 
Um, a little while back, I started talking about, and I hadn't really thought about it in many, many years, um, but I remember talking about it first uh, during one of the Superstar Hangouts, and I was thinking a lot. I think it was last year when I really started thinking about my motivation and why it is that I do what I do, and why it is that I always wanted to like inspire people. That's always been something that I wanted to do, uh, to inspire people, to give people hope. And I think a big part of the reason, and again, I sort of uncovered this while uh, doing an online hangout with my superstars and talking to them about it. But when I was a teenager, I went through really crippling depression. I mean, really bad depression. Uh, there was a period of time where I could barely function. And I remember during that time, I would go, uh, like if I had to go to an appointment, for example, and uh, there would be someone at the bus stop and they would just smile at me and, and say hi. Uh, bus drivers in particular, I remember just them smiling and saying hi. That was enough to keep me going for another day. Like that was enough to keep me strong. And I would never even remember these people if I had to meet them again. I would never recognize these people. But for one day, they saved my life. And so for that, I'm always grateful. And now as I'm talking to you guys about this, I'm remembering how, and I'm thinking about how, you know, that is a type of karma. In that moment, that bus driver, for example, I would like to think reaped some karma, reaped some good karma, or played out some karmic interaction between the two of us, that that kept me going for another day. And so that's what I mean when I say it doesn't have to be these huge, big, intense, romantic uh, moments or whatever. It can be these small, uh, really a breath, a split second where karma can play out. And so when I look at Pluto, Pluto going retrograde, and I was contemplating this from the perspective of karma because Pluto is often associated with karma, with fate as well. Um, I do think that it is our awareness, like when you realize that you did something wrong and if it isn't that you can make it right, you resolve to be different. You resolve to do things differently today and right now. That is a moment of transformation. That is a moment when you have freed yourself of the karma. I sincerely do believe that. It is awareness that can dramatically transform what it is that you reap, regardless of what it is that you have done before. And so this is what I think uh, is rooted, and this is the, the foundation of salvation. When we talk about the concept of salvation, it is ultimately this understanding that as it is that we change our energy, that we realize our mistakes or what we did in the past, and we resolve to be different, as soon as that happens, we are different. We have become different. And by becoming different, we will now reap a different future. We are now living in a whole other timeline on a whole other pathway. And I do think that it is Pluto going retrograde that's going to help us to cultivate awareness in our own journey. It's gonna help us to face the fear of our own karma and to ensure that we are doing what we need to to set things right. It's gonna calm any kind of external manifestations of a challenging karma down enough so that we can look within ourselves and resolve to be different, set things right where we can, and put ourselves on a path towards manifesting the things that we truly do desire. That is part of the great blessing of Pluto, and that is part of why Pluto is associated with fate, but it's also associated with profound transformation as well, and transformed circumstances as well. As we move towards the end of the week, that is when Mars and Neptune will speak in a difficult connection, a type of conversation that astrologers call a square. And this energy can be interesting in a few ways. On the one hand, when I look at it, it can be tiring, okay? So it's really important to make sure that all of us are taking the best of care of ourselves. It can suggest some disappointment. I'm sorry to say that, but that uh, is one way that this energy could manifest. Another way is in seeing things as we like them to be rather than as they are. 
seeing things much more pessimistically than they actually are, uh, feeling like our energy is stretched thin, uh, and feeling as if there are things that need to be done and we wonder if we have the energy to do them. The opportunity here is to take the compassion and the empathy of Neptune and shine that light on ourselves. The great opportunity here is to be kind and gentle to ourselves because that tends to be especially challenging under this vibration. And where it is that we actually can actively cultivate empathy and gentleness in our approach to ourselves, to be diligent in monitoring the ways in which we are speaking to ourselves, well, that is when we start to use this energy in the way that it was intended, which is to increase our strength and increase our certainty that who it is that we most desire to be, a more loving, more positive person, well, there are gonna be times when we are facing fears on the journey towards that sense of being more loving and more positive and more compassionate. There are gonna be times when we have to look at ensuring that our compassion is coming from a healthy place of calm and of peace within, rather than fear and overcompensation. And it is times like this that ask us and encourage us and invite us to be more honest with ourselves as to what part of us our own energy is arising from. This energy is also uh, interesting in another way as well. It is uh, going to feel a little bit like we've dipped into a Mercury retrograde. And I'm really sorry about that. I know it was just last week that Mercury uh, retrograde season came to an end with Mercury left shadow and changed signs. But this is just a brief moment and it really will be a moment when we feel like we've dipped into this other energy field that feels a little bit like a Mercury retrograde. And the reason for that is Mars is moving through the sign of Gemini and uh, Mercury is the ruling planet of Gemini. The sign of Gemini has to do with a lot of the mercurial things we think of like communications, uh, whether it's the communication tools or what we're actually saying to each other, perception, uh, learning, all of that is covered under the sign of Gemini. Our random interactions with others, synchronistic moments as well. But when you have Neptune speaking in a conversation of tension with Mars in the sign of Gemini, well, it tends to make all of these particular areas just confusing and yes, wonky. <laughs> if you think back, uh, a big signature of the recent Mercury retrograde season was this dance with Neptune that Mercury was doing. Now, it is going to be Mars in the sign that is ruled by Mercury dancing with Neptune as well, this time in a conversation of tension. So yes, it's gonna feel a little bit like it is very possible some of our communication modes, uh, whether it is collectively, uh, we might see that in different places on the planet or whether it is in our own lives. Uh, you wanna look at things like what's happening with social media, that it's working properly, uh, our telephones, our smartphones, our internet, all of that. Uh, be patient <laughs> is what I'm saying especially the later we move into the week, we're gonna to have to be patient with these different tools that we have. The great thing is though, when we have moments like this, it reminds us and it, it serves as a, a stark clarity as to how much uh, presence these very tools have in our lives. And it invites us to contemplate and to consider how much we want these tools to be present in our lives. And where is it that we can have a healthy detachment between these various tools that I mentioned and our lived experience and our experience of others and our interactions with others? Where is it that we actually want to be with people one-on-one -on -one and have these exchanges and see the subtleties play out as we interact with people? Uh, and where is it that it's enough to just be online? This is gonna be part of the contemplation and the consideration as we move later into the week. What I love about this week for us, well look, I think it is the meeting of the Sun and Uranus. 
Uranus is an energy of revelation and epiphany. And when the sun meets Uranus in the sky, it magnifies the energies of Uranus that much more. All of us in at least one area of life are going to have a moment when everything looks different in an instant. We're going to have a moment where we didn't realize we weren't seeing things clearly until we were. And we all in at least one area of life are gonna find ourselves invited to embrace the future, embrace our own freedom, and embrace a more authentic expression uniquely for ourselves. It is through trusting inner authority, which is part of what Uranus represents, the emphasis on inner authority, that we're able to come to decisions and a clarity about ourselves that is truly guided from within. But the most important thing is when we hear that inner authority, when we understand more clearly whom it is that we really are, and when we honor that, when we live in alliance with that, well, that is when we move towards an inner peace that is indescribable, but truly priceless. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys, and this should be set as a premiere. So thank you to everybody watching as part of the premiere. Thank you to everybody watching uh, as part of the replay as well. I appreciate each and every one of you. Of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com, sign up to be one of my super stars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I have some incredible events coming up that I'm really very excited about. Now my online event with the Relationship Club has been postponed. I will let you know the new date very soon, but I have in-person events that I am super excited about. Uh, coming up in Vancouver, I will be hosted by the Fraser Valley Astrology Guild. Uh, it will be Thursday, May 9th, and then the Saturday of that same week, where I will be teaching an evening class on Thursday and a half day work shop on a Saturday. You can check out the links below to join me in Vancouver. Very excited to be back. It's always a great crowd uh, and incredible love in Vancouver. It's one of my favorite cities in the world, I must say. And that's not only because I'm Canadian. I really feel that way. It's an incredible city. I'm looking forward to being back there. And it will be Memorial Day weekend that I will be speaking in Seattle, Washington at the Norwalk conference. Now the conference is sold out. There are a very limited number, a small number of uh, passes, day passes left, and there is also a waiting list. So if you would like to uh, hear me speak or hear some of the most amazing astrologers on the planet today uh, present on different topics, you can learn more about the Norwalk Conference. And again, I will make sure to link to information in the description below. And it is going to be Labor Day weekend that I am going to be in Baltimore. I'm really excited about being in Baltimore, being back in Baltimore. I was there, it'll be like three years, I think, since I was there by the time I get there. I'll be speaking at the NCGR conference. It's always an incredible group. NCGR is amazing. And I look forward to meeting friends and fans uh, out there in Baltimore as well. I have another big event coming up in January of 2020. It is the love, joy, hope, and transformation cruise event with some of the most brilliant astrologers alive today. Uh, I'm just very, very excited about this because I truly believe it is going to be one of these events that uh, changes lives and will change me as well. It will be an experience that we are going to be sharing together, uh, exploring ourselves, learning about astrology, uh, being out of our comfort zones in the middle of the ocean and visiting uh, other countries as well together. We will leave from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, we will be visiting or having stops in Mexico, in the Bahamas, and in Honduras. So it really is going to be very exciting and life 
changing and I can just feel that this cruise will take place under the conjunction of Pluto and Saturn. We will be on deck at night watching the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto together and in this process understanding where it is that we are going to embrace a spirit of transformation, hope, love and joy together. So you can learn a lot more about that online and again, I will link to uh, information below. And thank you so much to everybody who already has signed up, whether they've signed up through my website or someone else's, it already looks like it's going to be an amazing group. Um, there is, uh, cabin rates have already started going up because it's sort of like first come, first serve. But we do have somebody who's organizing roommates. And so if it is that you're trying to limit costs, uh, we do have someone who's going to help everybody get a roommate. Anyone who wants one will get one. And uh, I think that it is going to be truly rewarding. And I hope that if it is that you feel karmically aligned with this experience, you know, one thing I remember, I did a, a workshop. It was like a one day online webinar thing that I did, um, not with Ian Lavanzant, but her school. And that one workshop was so important it was so profound and it's actually free so i think if you go online you can find ian lavanzant's website uh, and she has these free like online uh, workshops and information sessions and all of that and they are actually really informative and really personal and really inspiring so i would encourage you to do that but um one thought that came across that i never forgot and this was a couple of years ago that i did this uh, webinar but it was that don't limit your vision. Don't limit your vision. And I always remembered that. And wherever it is in my life as well, when I find myself feeling like there's something that I'm meant to do, but you know, I'm feeling fear, that tells me that I'm limiting my vision. Now, of course, there are gonna be people, not everything is for everybody, right? Not everything is necessarily karmically for each and every person on the planet, of course not but it's about what it is that feels like it karmically aligns with you. And um, when you don't limit your vision, it's amazing how, how people, places, things, resources, situations, events, they have a way of just coming together in sometimes profound ways, letting you know that this is a part of your journey. And so I would encourage you, especially with a sky like this, with this week, with the energy there of, of clarity and quick action and movement, but also truth and understanding within, wherever it is that you feel karmically aligned, my hope for you is that you don't limit your vision. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your sacred journey with me. I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.